It's Friday, May the 23rd, 2014. I'm Mark Chatterley, and this is episode number 35 of TEN, Transport of Old News, for the week beginning May the 19th, 2014. It's been a long time coming. Two years after the first delivery started in the US, the first UK Model S will be delivered to its owner. According to the Green Car website, the first UK specification Tesla Model S will be delivered on Saturday 7th of June, with other deliveries following shortly after. Like the launch of the Model S in other European markets last year and the US two years ago, expect the first few months to contain a higher than average number of Model S deliveries, as pre-orders are fulfilled as quickly as possible by the Californian automaker. There's no official word yet on who the first Tesla Model S recipient in the UK will be, although we've heard rumours that suggest customer number one is both a long-time fan of electric automaker and a well-known. All we can say for sure, however, is it's not me or Nikki. Like with Europe, Tesla will have the first supercharger locations up and working when the first car is handed over. We were right when we thought we spotted the first UK supercharger location at the South Min Services on London's Orbital M25 motorway a few weeks back. Other UK sites are currently being worked on, with their rough locations being on the M20 near Folkestone and Dover, the M4 near Bath and Bristol, the M5 near Birmingham and the M6 near Manchester. These four initial sites will make it possible to drive almost anywhere in the UK in a Tesla Model S purely on the supercharging alone, with the only exception being the far north of Scotland. UK-based green utility company and electric car charge and infrastructure provider Ecotricity has filed a court papers against Californian automaker Tesla Motors in a disagreement over public charging infrastructure. Reported by the Evening Standard, Ecotricity has brought an interim high court injunction against Tesla Motors for what it calls as a smash and grab raid on its intellectual property concerning nationwide public charging stations. Ecotricity says it was approached by Tesla many months ago when the electric automator was planning its Tesla Model S entry into the UK market to help it plan and build its UK supercharger network. But after introducing Tesla to various motorway service companies, Ecotricity says Tesla went behind its back and tried to cut it out of any deals. Details about what has actually happened are hard to come by, but we have inquiries out with both companies and we'll bring you more information as and when we get it. While BMW delivered the first all-electric i3 cars back at the start of the month, the BMW i3 Rex appears to have struggled through EPA testing procedures for some reason. All of this came to an end this week when the EPA released their findings to BMW and it was able to start deliveries of the i3 Rex to customers. BMW EV advocate Tom Malogny was the first driver to pick up the i3 Rex in the US. In the EPA test, the i3 Rex gained 117 miles per gallon equivalent. That's only seven less than the fully battery electric i3. On gasoline only power, the i3 Rex will get 39 miles per gallon or 2.6 gallons per 100 miles. Not that the Rex is meant to be used for that long. Staying with delivery news for the moment, the official Formula E racing cars were delivered to all 10 teams taking part this week in their shared premises in Doddington in the UK. The cars, snappily called the Spark Renault SRT underscore 01E, have jointly been made by Renault and Spark Racing Technology. They can put out 200 kilowatts peak power while weighing 800 kilograms. This gives them an estimated 0 to 62 miles per hour of 30 seconds. All teams taking part will be racing in the same car. The Formula E races will take place over 10 cities across the globe, of which nine of them have already been announced. Many of our viewers will either remember personally or through having watched Who Killed the Electric Car when GM crushed the EV1s causing upset and bad feeling that lasted decades. So no modern manufacturer would make the same mistake, right? Unfortunately, it seems that BMW has done just this. A photo that was snapped and posted on Facebook shows a truckload of BMW Active E electric cars having been crushed and now on their way to somewhere. Leased to hundreds of BMW Electronauts across the US as part of a two-year test fleet program to develop and test the drivetrain used in the i3, the 1 Series derived Active E combined the style of BMW's popular sedan with zero emissions of electric car. While BMW had always planned to take back the Active E's when it started US deliveries of the BMW i3 EV and i3 Rex, many had hoped that somehow these important cars would avoid the crusher. It's unclear how many BMW Active E cars are headed for the same fate, but with BMW unable to sell them on to private buyers and only a limited number of cars destined for a second life in car sharing schemes, we guess this isn't the last truckload of perfectly functioning Active E's cars you'll see heading off to be destroyed. 211 2014 model year Nissan Leafs in the US and 65 in Canada have been recalled due to missing welding in their front structural member assemblies. Rather than fixing the cars affected, Nissan has said that it will just replace them whole, something unheard of in the automotive industry. There are no details given by Nissan as to the cause of the missing weld, but Nissan's official recall noted, listed on the NHTSA website, says that without the welds present, the vehicle failed to meet the requirements of Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard for Occupant Crash Protection and Electrically Powered Vehicles Electrolyte Spillage and Electrical Shock Protection. 
So this is something they want to fix quickly. This is the second official recall for the Leaf in the US this year. Earlier in March, the 2014 Leaf was recalled to address a software fault with the car's airbag sensor system. This week, as reported by Bloomberg, Tesla Motors, the Silicon Valley automotive startup, has become the state's biggest automotive employer. Employing over 6,000 people, Tesla beat out the previous holder of this title, Toyota, that had just 5,300 employees in the region. This employment level places Tesla alongside other Silicon Valley startup and social media site Facebook, who has around 7,000 employees. Of course, Tesla employs more people than this worldwide, but this does hint at how large the company is truly becoming. One interesting fact to come out of this is that the Gigafactory could, on its own, employ more people than Tesla currently does in the whole of California. Nissan has announced the UK prices for its all-electric ENV200 van, its commercial and regular vehicle that uses the same drivetrain as the Leaf. The van has had positive reviews from those who have tested it, including British utility company British Gas and global brands like FedEx, IKEA and Coca-Cola. The ENV200 would start in the UK for commercial purposes at £13,393 and £17,885 for the normal people version. Both of these prices include the applicable UK grant and battery rental. Both versions will be available from July with a variety of different spec levels and options. Following the model established with the Leaf, the van can be bought in Ascenta and Tecna specifications. However, Nissan deviates from this a little with the Ascenta Rapid, Ascenta Rapid Plus, Tecna Rapid and Tecna Rapid Plus specs. As the names may suggest, these intermediate levels mainly differentiate what type of charging is available with the van. The Rapid variants come in with Chadamo Rapid Charging and the Plus models come in with an upgraded 6.6kW onboard charger. Have you ever thought that the Model S just wasn't Californian enough? Do you dream of driving a luxury electric soft top with all the gadgets and gizmos of the Model S? Well, now you can. World-renowned body specialist Newport Convertible Engineering announced this week that it will offer the Tesla Model S in soft top convertible, hard top convertible, and two-door coupe variants. They had originally hoped to buy 5,000 vehicles direct from Tesla, carrying out the conversions on brand new vehicles and then selling them on as 2015 models, but due to high global demand for the Model S, they now want customers to order their Model S's first, then ship them to them for conversion. How much will this cost? Prices start from $29,000 for turning a standard Model S sedan into a four-door soft-top convertible through to a massive $80,000 for converting it into a two-door hard boot convertible. The Bellore Group, the French company behind the highly successful Autolib electric car sharing program in Paris, has just announced its first US venture, a massive car sharing service in Indianapolis. Due to go live sometime this year or early next year, the car sharing program will have around 500 cars with 1,000 charging stations. Like the original Autolib service in Paris, Blue Indy will make use of its own specially designed electric cars, known as the Bellore Blue Car, instead of ones from mainstream automakers. This is a three-door city vehicle with seating for four. Under the floor lies a 30 kilowatt hour lithium iron battery pack coupled to a small supercapacitor, while power is delivered to the wheels via a 50 kilowatt electric motor. Intended primarily for city use, the car is supposedly capable of a range up to 160 miles in the city, with a highway capable top speed of 81 miles per hour. And finally, it's not every day you get a manufacturer who doesn't want you to buy their car. But this seems to be the case with Fiat, or at least the opinion of Fiat Chrysler SEO Sergio Marchione. He told an audience at the Brooklyn Institute in Washington yesterday that he's fed up with losing money to the three-door electric hatch. According to Maccione, the Fiat is losing $14,000 on every Fiat 500e and that he won't sell one more car than he has to due to Californian zero-emission regulations. Which is a pity, really. That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. In the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the EV news that's fit to print, subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube, and join us for our talk show where we'll be discussing these stories and others on Transport Evolved. I'm Mark Chatterley, and until next time, stay juiced up!